Welcome back, my friends. It's so good to see you. I'm with my buddy Dave again here at Action Industries. Yes, this is where the action happens. I know it's a bad dad joke, but I had to do it. You know, I'm not the first one to do it, am nope. I? No. no. We're here multiple times a week. Is that part of the name as well? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I'm not the only one, but we are here at Action Industries, a company that's been around for quite a long time. However, however, what's happened since about 2015 to 19 to now? Absolutely incredible, absolutely fascinating. And Dave allowed us to bring cameras in for the first time to talk about some of what's going on. So first and foremost, Dave, when did this company start and what's it like today, the growth over the last few years? So this company actually started in 1975 and uh, was solid with an aerospace company, aerospace work, all that type stuff. Had a couple of new owners come in, I don't know, somewhere around 2005, something like that. Uh, but really started to take off around 2015. So just changed the methods of way they were machining. They were used to doing one ops, two ops, three ops, four ops. We then decided to go into machines that parts would come out complete. That's where we started our first dual spindle multi-turret type machines. And then it just went off from there. And just for fun, what year did you get here? <laughs> 2015? Yeah, but... How about that coincidence? <laughs> this guy is a star, that's why I say that. All right, let's continue to walk here, Dave. You work a ton in aerospace, and obviously Correct. I offered you a little flattery there. I know yep. you're a very humble man, and you yep. work very diligently, and probably give all the accolades to those you work with, and I yep. think that's fair to do. Yep. But you work predominantly in the aerospace world. What would you say are some of the complications of working in this industry? High volatile parts extreme tight tolerances, expense. When you make a mistake in Inconel, it hurts tremendously. <laughs> Anybody can throw away a $250 piece of aluminum and joke all day long, it was funny, funny, funny. But you scrap some of these blocks, they're 20, 30 grand a piece. You don't want to make a mistake on that, ever. No. So, How many years does it take to, to figure those? I mean, I imagine it's still, job, new jobs come in all the time. It's yes. just, you have to be really, careful don't you correct and as we build up experience we get more it becomes aluminum for us obviously we still do the setup materials we'll do the 15 fives we'll use something comparable but not with the price get it dialed in you feel a lot safer once you put that 10 fifteen thousand dollar part in there of just the material are yes. you as you've grown so quickly over the last few years yep. are you looking to expand outside of aerospace are you looking to make your no name more well known in aerospace are you looking for defense what, what are we talking about here today with all of these machines and what we're making? We would really like to diversify, yep. maybe into the semiconductor as something of that nature, but just in case something happens. But right now our butter is here. We find a sweet spot in aerospace. We have a good name in it. A lot of uh, companies are coming to us. So it's a good okay. problem to have. I'm not complaining. But yeah, we would like to see a little different work in here as well and expand. So why do you think that people are paying attention to what you're doing and really investing in your company because of all everything that you've invested in yourselves and in your partnerships? Correct. We finally got our recipe correct. We were struggling to find the right people, struggling to find the right management, struggling to find the right bodies, right machinery to go like with the bodies. Like a lot bodies. of us out there. Correct. We finally got that all under control about probably two or three years ago. And that's when we started to even see even more growth. We doubled and almost tripled in size in that short amount of time. So we've been lucky with a few really good hires and that solved a lot of our problems. So. I noticed also as I'm walking around, and we're gonna show the audience everything that you have going on here, that there's not a ton of automation, but you have a lot of really intellectual setups and longer cycle times to make sure that your parts are coming out perfect. Correct. So if you take this four plus one machine, instead of the automation route, we actually designed a fixture that will hold three laying vices. So rotate, rotate, rotate. It actually is automation in itself. Most people are just happy to have one laying vice in there. We're not. Our next design actually puts eight laying vices in there. So when we get the ability to get a little bit of downtime, we're gonna redo our fixturing, but we do have three vices going at one time. That's can, how we run it. Can I play the numbers game with you real yes, quick? Yes, sir. If you're already running that many parts in that machine and you're getting ready to run, how many did you say? Eight? Eight. eight. Yeah. What's your cycle time turn into? Yeah. Uh, 
well, what we like to get through is a shift and a half, maybe. Yeah. So maybe one person just loading, next person unloading, getting ready for the next day to get the parts into inspection and in process and all that good stuff. Would you agree or disagree that having operations like this helps compensate for the labor and skill shortage that everyone's talking about right 100%. now? Because I've seen this young man bounce from this machine, this yep. machine. I see probably four times the amount of machines as there are people in this plant right now yep. and every machine is running they all have green lights yep. and you're obviously producing yes so one thing you have to combat that so if you can't find the people figure out a way that the people you have can work and that's it automation tooling anything of that nature that just lets them better because you have to you, we just don't have the bodies out there like we used to and the bodies that you need to perform they just aren't out there so got to work through it. Yeah, and even even when we find bodies, a lot of times there's a lot of training involved yes. to go along with it. Yep. And we'll get into that in the third segment of this tour because we have some really accurate parts to show you. But for now, you got some bread and butter, as we like to say, right? Yes, some sir. meat and potatoes. Yep. Are there any other bad cliches we could give? <laughs> I think we hit them all. <laughs> about about the, the core of what you have going on here. Can we go step into the other facility and 100%. talk about that? Yeah, that'd be great. Well, Dave, we've made it inside. What did I call it? Bread and butter, yeah. meat and potatoes, all the bad cliches. Those, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but it is, it is. And we're going to find out why in just a minute. It's because Dave is, is a brilliant young man whose wheels are always turning, much like my own. Not that I'm brilliant, but he is. But wheels are always turning. And we're making parts on EDM machines that would normally be roughed on CNC machines. And this beast inside of here is feeding everything else that's going on in this facility at Action Industries, isn't it? Correct. Yep, definitely. And too. We, a lot of people are afraid of recast. Sodic has a way of low recast, giving us very little material to have to be removed to make it aerospace friendly. The machines that we can't bring to net because they have special recast callouts, we then machine. But we'll still rough on the EDM and then send over to the machine shop. We found that to be an excellent way to machine. You just said making aerospace easier, convenient, or at least simpler, right? And I didn't know ink and could be made simple, but yeah. you've done the best of your ability, haven't you? It's working out very well for us. We're happy with the way we're making parts and so are our customers. Hey. So the proof's right there. We have a ton of work and obviously the way we're doing it works for us. <laughs> and I think it would work for other people, but no stealing ideas. Yeah. This is a good idea, but it takes a lot of time, investment, knowledge, yep. know-how. Knowledge, yep. It's been your entire life partnerships with the right people Correct. in order to make something like this yep. work so while we pretend oh it's been so easy it's a lot of work and dedication right. that goes into it too and you need somebody with a lot of edm experience to realize oh hey we can do that on an edm you take a regular mill guy or something and he's gonna say oh no we could always do that on a mill so you got to think a little outside the box and bring the two together and then you get a nice happy marriage do you think that maybe this is the catalyst for such growth over the last few years? It's definitely helped because it's expanded us. While these machines are running, those machines are also running. So our capacity grows. Uh, this thing could run all night long, zero need for attendant. So I'll come in, we'll get these machines going over the weekend. Sunday, Monday, parts are done. Miracle, it's, it's there. So. We have cameras. I just look at the camera, make sure everything's spinning. Everybody's happy. That's what we want, everyone yes. to be happy. Yep. So I'm gonna be Captain Redundant. Yes, sir. Because I brought this up in our first segment just a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. they're in our second segment now. And we were talking about all the machines running, all the green lights. We only saw a few yes. people here and there. Yep. I walk in here and I know all of these are running. I don't see anybody. No. We saw a couple of folks over here, but exactly what you said, running yep. with what you have. We have three guys in this department. So three guys doing all the sinkers, the whole poppers, I'll come in and help as well whenever I see something. But to be honest, they're running without me. Three guys and how many machines approximately? So we have 13 EDMs now. 13 EDMs and three guys, and it's yep. just running yep. like a well-oiled machine. And don't tell us to Jim, but we're planning on getting more. So. <laughs> don't worry, your secret's safe with me. We haven't hit record uh, or anything. Whoops, yeah. No, yeah, don't worry about that camera and the millions of people that might be watching right now. That's we won't true. tell Jim at all. all right. Don't worry. All right. But as I look here, these are what you've described to me as knuckles. You're yes. roughing over here. Even though your machines are precise, high, highly precise yep. EDM machines, you're doing a lot of roughing over here. And we have a third component to this interview, to this, this factory tour. 
where you're actually taking these components and popping them into another area to do the finishing work, correct. when oftentimes I think of EDMs as the finishing work. Yes, correct. So it just depends on tolerancing. If we're dealing with a one thou true position, two thou profile, obviously it's gonna be super, super tough on a part that heavy. I have to bring it over the five axis. So they do the plus, obviously drilling, tapping, those types of things have to be done there. So I leave them as little material as possible and then the rest is finished on there. Champers, everything done. Now, instead of just talking about it, can we show a little 100%. bit of that last segment? Let's take a walk to a third building. All right, Dave, we've made it to the closing argument, as they We're would say, court, which I've never been to. So, <laughs> no, 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 I've never seen us. one right. myself. No, no, not at all. <laughs> but we did make it to the closing argument. We're here in front of your OKK machines. We talked about the roughing being done on EDMs, how you've got to flip the script on everything. Yes. And this is where you're doing your finishing. And here's some of the incredible tools that you're yep. utilizing. I mean, that's a monster. That's a monster. It gets the job done, though. It does get the job yep. done. Now, we are talking about Inconel. We've been talking about aerospace the entire time. We've talked about expansion. But here, as we invite the audience in to look at what you're doing, would you mind describing some of the finishing work that's going into this process, Dave? So here is where we're holding the one thou true position and the two thou profile. Uh, five tenths on the bore. So obviously, I tried doing it on the EDM. It just took too long. It was about 16 hours. Wow. So, what was it reduced to here, uh, approximately? We're at about eight hours complete part. So, oh, wow. Yeah, that's so impressive. No way it can compete. Not even yep. a little bit. Yep. So that's where they beat us there. So you work hand in hand, you figure out what's best, and that's where you finish it, or you complete it, or you get it roughed out, whatever. Well, I find it fascinating that you've taken EDM and chose to rough it and flip the entire script, as we just said. But I have to have a conversation with you because I know these OKK machines quite well, and I know your work guys that are here and gals yes. that are here. So would you give more credit to the machine being responsible for that true position for your guys being, or the combination of both? Because I think if you have a bad operator, it's not going to happen. Right. You have a bad machine, it rarely it, happens. Yep. <laughs> so you could have the best machine in the world. Doesn't You could have a Ferrari. Doesn't mean you have the right driver for it. If you have the wrong driver for it, you're crashing that machine all day long. So yes, you need to have the right guys with the right equipment and then success starts from there. All right, my friend. Well, we've decided to be nice enough and allow everyone to see what you're doing. Thank you for doing that, by it. the way. I do want to kind of bring this all full circle and say, because you do want to expand, you are growing so quickly. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, there's no lack of help needed for the aerospace yep. world. So you're gonna have work upon work upon work. But as you continue to expand, are there any closing discussions you'd like to have with everyone watching, inviting them in to give you a look at your website, maybe come take a, a look at the facility or invite people. If you're hiring people, bring them in as well because you have a great facility here. We're always looking for people. Anybody see this, want an opportunity to work here, please give us a call. Yeah, and always looking to bring more work in, and, and, and you and the owner of this company have done such an amazing job, along with everyone else here, to make sure that everyone who does work with you is getting that clean, precise part on time. Yep. I know that you've been doing for years now. Correct. And we're going to keep doing it, try and get bigger and better. You, I think, are my new hero. I do appreciate that. <laughs> you as well. Actionindustries.com. Give these guys a look out here in Southern California, making some of the precise and difficult parts on the planet look easy.